This is Dream Power Radio, the place where your dreams turn into reality. Here is your host, Debbie Specter Weissman. Hello, 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 and welcome to Dream Power Radio. This is a place where we talk about dreams, both daytime and nighttime dreams, and how you can use them to make the internal shift to a life you love and rediscover the truth of who you really are. When I was a kid, there was a popular song called, Did You Ever Have to Make Up Your Mind? The lyrics had to do with choosing a girl, but I want to focus here on the song title itself. And that's because the funny thing is, most people go through life never really having to make up their mind, or making a deliberate choice on the overall direction they want their life to take. They may think they do, but upon further examination, realize that what they end up doing has more to do about others' expectations, like what their parents or teachers or significant others want, than it does about making an active, intentional choice. And that's why many wake up one day and ask themselves, is this really all life has to offer? Obviously, what I'm getting to here is that when we do decide to make our own choices, we can end up with lives that are rich, fulfilling, and yes, become our dream lives. Someone who knows this well is my guest, business mindset coach, Dr. Victor Manzo. He's helped his clients break free from their self-limiting beliefs and have both successful businesses and productive personal lives. Dr. Vic is the author of several books, including his latest, Decoding the Matrix, Powerful Tips for Unleashing Your Potential and Accelerating Your Spiritual Awakening. Welcome to Dream Power Radio, Dr. Vic. I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, it is my pleasure. Well, Vic, in your latest book, you describe the situation as either living inside or outside the matrix. So explain what you mean by this. Yeah, the matrix, just to understand a little bit of what that is, is just another term for that is the human collective consciousness. And that's just basically taking all the humans in the world and averaging them all out of their consciousness levels. And that creates something called the matrix. Now, in the matrix or outside the matrix, in the matrix means that the matrix is always going to pull us back to what the average is. It's, you, know, you can call this the law of association. It's just a looking at it from a macro perspective. For those who may not know the law of association, that's just you know the five closest people to you, average them out. That's who you are. Or you take the five incomes of the closest people near you. That's kind of you average those out. And that's kind of be kind of be where you are. And so the, the same thing happens here with the matrix. And so the key is if we're not living intentionally, setting our vibe, setting our consciousness level, setting what matters for us to, for the day. If we just go living our lives, what most people do, living from the subconscious, living unconsciously, unaware, then what ends up happening is, is we live this life and it's like we feel like we're in a rat race. We're in the hedonic wheel, just constant things happening over and over. And we kind of get bored with life and we're always looking for the next thing that give us a slight sort of excitement. And then it, you know, two, three months down the road, we're right back to where we were again. And it's this vicious, constant cycle that happens until we understand how the matrix conditions us in some ways. And then from there, we become aware and awareness solves 50 to 90 percent of the problem. And then we can deliberately choose what matters for us. What do we really want to choose to have an experience rather than just living life? Think I love how you said it, like we think we're doing this, but we're really not. And knowing how to the influences it has on us to be able to choose every single day allows us to live outside that matrix, the outside the average, outside the concept. And that actually, from that, that allows to not only help yourself live more fulfilled, but then doing that, which is what I love about this, is you actually allow for others to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. now, that's a very important point to make here. Uh, one part of living inside the matrix, though, is that you end up living more in survival mode than anything else. It's almost like a default position. So if you find yourself like that, how do you move away from that? Yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's, it's amazing how much we are. So the conditioning is so much revving our nervous systems to be in that state. And so it all comes back to nervous system and how do we recenter it, right? How do we calm that, that central part of our, the central nervous system, otherwise short for CNS. And, you know, one of the things that I always give recommendations, I used to give recommendations like this to my patients, and I definitely do it to all my clients, is the most simplest thing to do to calm that nervous system is breath work, breathing, just doing some sort of form of breath. We have to breathe anyhow, so might as well just slow it down because there's a part of your brain that actually is always detecting what your respiratory rate is. 
And this is why all the research on breathwork shows, wow, we can actually influence our autonomic nervous system, that nervous system that runs on its own. And from breath, so if when you're stuck in that that stress mode, that fight or flight, fawn or freeze, or you're, you're in that reptilian brain, because that's what kind of takes you to, you become very reactive to life. And rather than, and this is what we talk about choosing versus not, because we're just constantly just... Here's a new news thing that came out. Oh my God, I can't believe this. I'm going on social media and sharing this out and everybody's going out and blowing all these things up. That's all reactive. That's impulsive. Instead of choosing, like, do I want to give my energy to that? Does that really matter? Does that really matter for me? What does that, how does that, what does that do for me? Do I need to know that information? Like you get to really play, like get to choose that rather than be pulled. And, um, so breathing is one of the easiest things because it will calm that nervous system down. And the research shows at least six, six deep breaths. I tell my, I always tell people do 10, just in case you're trying to shortcut it. And the other advice I give too is like, if you feel like it's not working, just keep taking deep breaths till it does. Because it will. It's just, you're maybe not taking enough of a deep breath. I had a client one time was like, I did 30 deep breaths and I did not feel any different. I said, I go, you know, if you want, I go, you can send me a video of you doing this and I can look at you without your shirt. He's a male, by the way. And without your shirt, I can see if you're really expelling your stomach or not. Because he was like, I was giving him like, do the head, do the hand on your heart and the stomach and do this. And he's just like, it doesn't work. And I said, well, there's only one option left I have, but he ended up figuring out and got it to work. So it, that's usually the, 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 the number one thing that I'd recommend. And part of the problem, if you want to call it that, is that this conditioning that we have, it actually starts in childhood and then it gets reinforced by life situations that, you know, either keep us small or keep us believing, you know, we call those self-limiting beliefs that we're not good enough or, you know, you don't deserve or anything like that, that keeps us from really thinking that we can get outside that matrix and outside where we can choose because we don't believe we can. How do we move beyond that? Yeah, this is a great question. I love this because we, it's so deep rooted in us. I mean, age zero to seven conditions our life, but age seven, your brain thinks it knows the world. And what happens from there is it's proving to you of what you went through to show how that's true, you know, because based on our beliefs and what, you know, self, the limiting beliefs we have and what we we've experienced through that time frame, Now it's, it's, it's kind of showing. That's why we get into a trap where we're like, this always happens to me, but this is how it always is. You know, here it goes again. And it's like, there's some limiting beliefs within that to do that. So when you, to break away or, you know, first we have to create awareness, right? And these are very easy because we're, it is easy. It's, or I should say it's simple because when you look at those triggers, right? Or check the stories you're saying to yourself, this always happens to me or man, or how do you, what I mean by a trigger is let's say, let's go with finances because there's a lot of attachment of energy to that. And, you know, you get like an unexpected bill and you get all upset and you get bothered and you're like, oh my God, I can't believe this. Here we go. And whatever it may be, whatever that, whatever comes out afterwards, you getting very reactive to that is a sign that there is some sort of limiting belief there that we want to look into that. Now, this kind of work is something the way I at least I show it to my clients, because I'm like, I can figure some of these things out for you guys. But usually I like the through getting to know you over a period of time, your language, what you get bothered by. I go, that's usually going to lay it out for me to where I know where that is. And so when we do find something like that, let's say, you know, a lot of it's a lot of low self-worth, usually a lot of things stem from. And let's say it's limiting beliefs on money, right? Money, money only goes to money or uh, limiting belief is uh, money is the root of all evil or money just grows on trees. You know, you think growth money grows on trees or money's scarce. Some of those, right? You have those conditioned in you. But let's say you, you become aware of it and you realize that, wow, I really do. Like this happened to me, but it's when like, wow, I really do have some limiting beliefs on money. Well, once you kind of figure out that you do, and that it could be, you don't have to, sometimes you have to figure the whole thing out, but sometimes it could just be like, all right, there's something here about money that, you know, why, why I think maybe, why do I get bothered? Well, I think it's scarce. Okay, you start asking these questions. Why is this? Why is that? Why do I think this way? Where, where did this come from? This isn't me, you know? And, and as you go through that process, you start to get to a point where it's like, I remember when I was five or six years old and my parents were arguing about money. And from that moment on, I just thought money wasn't good because money causes this because they were talking about money and here's what I saw. And that's just how our brains work back then. And so all of a sudden you imprint that. But when you become aware, then it's like change the self-limiting belief to a self-empowering belief. Because that's the beauty of what we have. We get to choose words, we create the story, and we create our life. So you can take that limiting belief once you become aware of what it is. And then from that, you start to change the words around. 
So instead of saying money's scarce, you say money's abundance, or I'm a magnet for money, or whatever you like that makes you. And the thing is, it's it, it, it we get so caught up in catchy phrases nowadays, and I'm like, forget all the catchy phrases, just what feels good, what really gets you excited, what feels good, what what shows up in your body that makes you feel like I like this, I like what this feels like, I like where this is going, because that's usually going to align better for you. Then going, oh, I heard from so-and-so on a TikTok video. And the man, I love the way they phrased that. I'm taking that for myself. Now, that may work, but most of the time it's not because it's not authentic to you and your words, unless you use the same language. But that's kind of one of the things I use is triggers is one of the easiest things because there's always, always something there. And the other way to become aware is just the patterns that show up in the stories you keep telling yourself. You know, I, I, I catch myself to this day sometimes going, I was like, I'll be like, oh, here we go again. I'm like, ah, ah, no, hold on, hold on. Nah, it's not here we go again. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> and then, so then I'm like, this is just what it is. Let's move forward. And this is, there's nothing else to this. Right. And, you know, I love the point that you're making about awareness because when so many people don't take the time to look at themselves or ask themselves those questions, which if they did, they, they would get answers very quickly and, and come to those conclusions very quickly. But and, and it's a process too. When you talk about awareness, I like to think that I'm an aware person. Yesterday, I got a letter from my state saying I hadn't filed a certain form I needed to file. And I was first indignant because I did file it and I guess they didn't get it or whatever, but the anger started to come up and I said, I had to stop myself. I said, no, this is just a situation. Calm down. It's easy to deal with. The anger is just going to make yourself mad and you don't have to do that. You just have to say, okay, let's look at it objectively and move on and, and sort of take that emotion out of it, and which has a lot to do with reactive behavior. 100%. And I think that, and I love how you share that because I, I have a five month, five month old daughter right now. And it's, you know, being a pediatric chiropractor, I, I've, I've talked to hundreds and hundreds of moms. I've, I've, I've got to know, like, even when we didn't, my wife, my wife worked in the office and they'd be like, you guys have kids. You're so great with kids. We're like, we just, we're just around a lot of moms and kids. We just know we got, we've learned, we wanted to be really good at what we do. And we learned and studied from you guys. You guys teach us what strategies and what stuff. So when we've had our, what our own daughter, I always look and I tell my wife all the time, I'm like, we're going to, you know, we're not, we, we are as aware as we can possibly be, especially my knowledge on neurodevelopment, especially mindset, neuroscience, all the stuff that I've studied. I'm like, we're still going to mess things up because you can't be aware all the time. You just can't. There's subconscious stuff in me that even though as much as I work on this as constantly as I can, there's still stuff and there'll still be stuff to the day I die. So I'm always like, you know, I, I said, but the key is, is like you, what you did there was, I love that example. Because even with like my daughter, she has to be bounced all the time to go to sleep. It's just, you know, my wife bounced on a ball when she was pregnant. Talk about conditioning her, my daughter at an early age when she was in the womb pregnant. She bounced uh, for soothing and so forth. So my daughter gets bored. What's the one thing that soothes her to sleep? Bouncing on a Swiss exercise ball. And she's five months old still to this day. My wife's doing it right now. And it's one of those things where I remember one time I was doing it and she was just fidgeting, fidgeting and fidgeting. And I'm like, honey, you got to go to sleep. Let's go. Now, if you saw me from the outside, you heard my voice. You'd be like, I, you, I didn't seem bothered. Internally, though, I was like, come on, let's go to sleep. You know, you're tired. Why are you fighting? And then I caught myself and I'm like, stop. That's that's not she's 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 uncomfortable. She's frustrated. Just take a deep breath. I took a deep breath. I focused on my breath. I slowed it down. But it was about a minute, about two minutes later. I go to look at her. She's sleeping. And I go. Focus on what comes up. Why don't and I, later I was like, just let's be more aware of that. Let's just keep that in check. Now I'm sharing that because if we do that in all areas of our life, imagine how much more consciously we would live, how much more we really are choosing, right? Because I could have got frustrated, I could have got aggravated with her and so forth. It's not her fault. She's just she's not, she's just she's a kid. She's an infant. Uh, and at the same token, though, I was like, this is not her. This is my problem. Let me take myself responsibility. Let me calm myself down. And what's interesting is when I did that, she picked up on that energy. So she was already picking up on my energy as it was. That's a whole nother story. But the key thing about life, if we do that more often, then we're really choosing our experiences and we start to live more consciously. And we break away from a lot of the conditioning and programming of so many things that go on in today's world. I have a powerful statement. And with that, we're going to take a short break. We are speaking with business mindset coach, Dr. Victor Manzo, and we'll be right back. I'm Kelly Sullivan Walden, a.k.a. Dr. Dream, and I just wrote the book, A Crisis is a Terrible Thing to Waste, The Art of Transforming the Tragic into Magic. 
You can pre-order it wherever books are sold. Welcome back to Dream Power Radio with your host, Debbie Specter weissman Yes, welcome back to Dream Power Radio. I'm your host, Debbie Specter weissman and we're talking about mindset and success with Dr. Victor Manzo. Well, Vic, one of the beliefs that you had it as a child was that you wanted to be a doctor, something that no one else in your family had done. And so you went to chiropractic school and on, on your training, you said you were influenced by a book called The 33 Chiropractic Principles. What were some of the most important things you learned from that book and, and what can we learn from it? You know, what's interesting about that book is I remember when it was called, it's called The, the 33 Principles of Chiropractic. And I was like, oh, great. This is cool. There's principles of chiropractic because when we got into school, we learned that chiropractic is made out of three things, philosophy, the art, and then the science. And so this was the philosophy part. And I was just like, cool. This is this is right up my alley. Open the book. I start reading them. I go, this has nothing to do with chiropractic, like at least chiropractic than what I thought it was. It was about universal intelligence and innate intelligence and how all living things have innate intelligence, all coming stemming from the universal intelligence. You can, to my interpretation, I would say that's God and soul is what you're kind of talking, we're talking about here and how that all, how force and matter and all these different things, these are all different principles I'm sharing, but in there. And it was just fascinating and how for me, because this is stuff I was very intrigued by, I was like, this is so cool. This is universal principles. These are like universal laws in a way of how things are constructed in the universe. And I'm like, this is so cool that this is, you know, but we didn't, we learned a little bit. And then of course it was just memorization, right? What's, what's principle number 26. That's what I have to do to get past the test. Okay, great. And then it was like nothing else continued, but that created a, to me, I already had it going into school with philosophy because the chiropractor got me involved and in, interested in becoming a chiropractor. He was very philosophical based, power to body that heals the body. Everything happens from above, down, inside out. These are all hermetic principles, by the way, from 7000 BC, I think it was, or something like that. But it's one of those things where it was it was so intriguing. And then I had the book, which was great, and I wanted more. And that was like the end of it. And I was just like, no, 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 no. I want to learn more about that. I don't want to learn about the dd palmer was the first chiropractor uh his four wives and which wife was number three and i, I don't want to learn that i mean it's great to know the history but what does that do for me i was like i want to learn you know more about his philosophy his mindset what he's taught because he was he used to be a magnetic healer before he he discovered chiropractic and he was very in the metaphysical space and i was like that really intrigues me i want to learn more about that but the book helped a little but then that was the end of it and then it created a whole hunger to want to learn more so that was like your stepping off point to getting to where you are now. Yeah, because that that venture, what happened was, is I ended up venturing off because the school, the school, unfortunately, schools only teach you to pass an exam. They don't teach you really to be a chiropractor. And so it was one of those things where I went outside the school system and I went to go study Reiki at first to become a Reiki master and trainer. And then from there, because I wanted to understand that energy component. And I was like, what's energy healing? I want to, I feel like I can heal with my hands or something about my hands. Maybe it's why I'm a chiropractor. I have no clue. I used to be able to put people's, my hands on somebody who had a headache and their headache would go away. I had no clue what I was doing, but I, I felt like there was something I was pulled in a tra drawn to that. From there, I started studying like 10 to 12 different energy healing techniques. And, and what I was doing was, is I was actually trying to seek the energy component of chiropractic because I want to understand the depths of healing to the deepest I can take it because the, the founder, D.D. Palmer, he talked about tone of the nervous system, which is the vibration, if you can take that or you can turn it into consciousness too. Um, he talked about this whole concept of tone, nervous system chiropractic how it you know expresses consciousness it brings god and human together and connect the, the connection stronger some people sound this seems like this is really crazy stuff when i bring this up but there's there's some truth to what he shares and so that took me down this hole this, this this rabbit hole to understand that but what ended up happening is not only that i learned about energy healing i learned about quantum physics and consciousness i learned about spirituality i learned about universal laws and all this other stuff that i didn't even, didn't even expect to learn and that's where the beginning of what I kind of share and teach now started way back then while I was in chiropractic school. One of the things that you also talk about is the power of vision. So explain a bit by what you mean by that. Yeah, vision is 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 it's it's shared a lot in different you know scriptures and ancient wisdom and different things like the Bible. You know, Proverbs twenty nine eighteen states, "If you people without the vision, people without a vision will perish." And it's one of those things that when we look at it from a spiritual context, 
what we can experience in our life, what we can choose, what we, what we can create. It's, it all states, you've read this in the past, is that what you can see in your mind's eye is what you can create in your reality, right? So what's the vision of what you have for yourself? If you listen, look at, you know, you look back at, you know, the Bible's a great one. There's other ones too. They'll talk about uh, a prophet or somebody having a vision, you know, of seeing something, right? M Martha Luther King Jr., I have a dream. That's a vision, right? You call it a dream. Vision, kind of similar. And uh, you're getting visualizations or you're getting visions in the dream, right? But it's one of those things where vision is the thing of how the mind works. Because the interesting thing from a neuroscience perspective is your brain cannot tell the difference. Your subconscious cannot tell the difference. What you see with your eyes and what you see inside your mind's eye or your, 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 your imagination or what you visualize. And so that is a key principle because if you can visualize, let's say you look at your bank account right now, you got, you're in the negatives, right? And you're like, but I, you know, you're freaking out, whatever it may be, but you can also change that reality and see yourself and who you become as being, let's say you want to be a millionaire and you, you, you constantly are seeing yourself, your future self as a millionaire, your brain doesn't know the difference of what reality you're in. If you keep whatever you keep feeding it is what it's going to think it is. And then what happens is that energy is going to start to shift and change. And that's going to attract to you people, situations, circumstances, and so forth. That's going to help align you to that future self of who you want to become a millionaire. So this is the premise of all things that I always tell people in the work I work with clients. It's vision, vision, vision first. We have to have a set vision and I have it in multiple ways. You know, you have to have your soul's purpose. What's your, what's the reason why you exist? What's that vision? Why are you here in today's world? And I think a lot of times we, it's a great question to ask, like this year alone, I had about almost 40% of my clients who own a business, who've been in, some of them been in the business for over 10 years, actually decide to get out of that business. Cause when we did this work, they found out that wasn't really what their purpose was. They felt internally that it was, they did it maybe because of money or someone told them to get into it and they did really well with it. But they had they they realized there was actually as you wake up right you get out of this unconsciousness they're like I don't they, I mean I remember I had one client was in tears I don't want to do this anymore I'm done and I said okay but let's let's put a plan together let's put a strategy together so we can make that transition and so this is why vision is so critical but it also helps you get over the short term stuff that happens in life because you know life's gonna be ups and downs. And if you can, this is what billionaires do. They have a vision of what they're going to go towards and they don't really care per se on what's going on short term because they're always looking into the future. Elon Musk is a great example of that. I always share his story in 2019 when he couldn't get the Model 3 cars out. He was having issues in the factories and the warehouses to push them out. And the whole summer, the whole business community was just coming at him. Interview after interview coming at him. You got stocks are dropping. You can't get production up. You're having these issues. You know, all these things are going on. You're just going to, and, and I remember, I'm paraphrasing, but in the interview, he was like, you guys are hitting me on the short term, but the, I have a long-term game. He goes, we're going to get to the long-term game. It's going to happen. It's just a matter of time. And we all know the story. Over a year later, he's the richest man in the world. Mm -hmm. and, and it's his vision coming to life, which is yes. anybody can do that. Because you, you the other thing is that you, know, you look at successful people and you often say, oh, they did it. They're special. But the reality is they're not. They just have that mindset that has put them where they are today. Yeah, like if you think about it too, like we're like I always tell people, we're all made of the same stuff. You want to take it from the physical element, we're all made of the same stuff. If you want to take it to the energetic perspective, quantum physics has shown us we're all made of energy, right? It all comes down to just what's the vibration that we're at. That's really the stemming of, and this is the I think that there's a huge pivot point in in our in human civilization right now is we're we're getting. I mean, we're not seeing it as fast as I like it to, but we're kind of getting away from this whole doing this. And we're starting to slowly, and I know I'm, I'm one of the people that are trying to get this out there, is to get back into the being and be those energy individuals who remembering the essence of who we really are and knowing that we just have to know, learn how to just go back to shifting our energy and holding the energy of what we want to create. And as long as we stay in that space, that's why vision is so critical. Because the vision doesn't, again, doesn't allow you to let the short-term stuff get to you. What I mean by short-term is that, because if you have something that short-term shows up, that's not good in your definition of being not good, then all of a sudden that lowers your vibe. And however long you stay there is going to keep you lowering. But if you have a vision and you just keep you seeing yourself of where you're going to go, then you keep your energy up and you don't let that get to you so much. I mean, this is what billionaires do. I always say the billionaires, most of them know they play in the quantum world. And I go, some of them, I think, don't realize that they do. 
Um, and I won't mention names. There's a couple of them who are like, you got to work all the time and take action. But then when I watch and see how they live their life, I'm going, they're totally living in the quantum. I just don't think they see. I think they're so consumed by the doing that they don't realize that where they're, but if like something comes up, they're like, it is what it is. Let's keep moving forward. You know, here's where I'm going. And I'm like, that's part of it. I like that. That's a vision. You know where you're going. And having that vision keeps you living out of the matrix instead of being sucked into it. Yeah, you set the tone. That's all part of setting the, like there's an intention thing I teach about that like daily, but then there's also that one where whatever comes like, for example, like all recession may be happening. The housing market may crash, stock market, everyone, there's all this negative stuff. And I always tell people, I'm like, don't buy into that. I'm not saying it's not going to happen. If you feel like you need to take preparations, do whatever you think is best for you. Don't buy into the fear because the more you give energy to that and the more others do that, guess what happens? It's going to be way worse for us if it does. But if we set our intention of what we want to experience and the stuff I teach, like this stuff I'm sharing, like for the listeners here, just to give you some science on this. I mean, when, when COVID first hit and the lockdowns first came, I mean, small businesses were getting crushed. But then how was it that billionaires increased their net worth by 56%, which was over $630 billion? Now, some people say that's control, whatever. That's fine. Well, I love the other example of if you look at the history timeline of the United States, there is only one time that we had the most millionaires ever come out of the history of our, our existence, and that was during the Great Depression. Now, how is it the Great Depression, which was one of the most devastating times financially for the United States, where we had, you know, food was scarce and you had certain food you can get only at a certain period, all this stuff, yet we had the most millionaires ever come out of there. This is about living outside the matrix, not giving in, focusing on what you want to experience because what you focus on expands. And when we start to understand this game a little bit more and how it plays, we can literally alter humanity's direction. We can't, maybe not the global, but there's also sub matrices. The United States play is a sub matrix of the, of the main of the matrix. So is Europe and Asia and so forth. And if most of us can start to understand that if we just give our awareness and attention to things that matter to us and what we want to choose to experience, what we do in our own lives. Now that starts to create, we can also give opportunity for others to do the same. And if other people start to do that, we start to change the direction and start to realize that you've all heard it before. The people, the people have the power, the powers in the people with the people. And the, the way things are structured is to constantly keep us thinking we don't. And the mo like I said, there's a shift coming where we're starting to realize that. Like I said, I wish it was happening faster, but I'm hoping to see the shift in my time. I'm hoping, I'm thinking it will happen, but we'll see. But to where we start to more consciously choose, and it's going to change the direction of everything. I have a million more questions to ask you, but I just have time for this one, which is how can people find out more about you, your book, and your work? Awesome. My my, my website's my hub, empoweryourreality.com. You can find, I have a free book on visualization there and I get into some of the science of how powerful it is and how it can alter, you know, your physical body and, and different things like that. I also have, if you're a business owner and you're, you stuff that I'm sharing resonates and you're looking to learn some of these mindset things, how to live more effortlessly in, in what you do. I do a free breakthrough call to where we can dive in and learn a little bit more about you and see if I can help. And then if I can, I'll share how that is. And then uh, social media, if you want to connect with me, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and TikTok is where I play. It's in the bottom left corner of my website. Reach out if you have a question or anything. I love to hear from people. Well, Dr. Vic, thank you so much for being on Dream Power Radio today. No, thanks for having me. This was a blast. We've been speaking with business mindset coach, Dr. Victor Manzo. Hope you've enjoyed today's program. If so, please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Until next time, this is Debbie Spector Weissman saying, sweet dreams, everybody. You've been listening to Dream Power Radio with your host, Debbie Spector Weissman. For more information on Debbie or to sign up for her newsletter, go to dreampowerradio.com. This has been Dream Power Radio.